Hi, I'm Amy with Our Memories for Life, here with the tips and tricks video to help you with your year in a snap project. Today I want to talk about all the prep work that goes into getting ready to start your new book. From what kind of photos you want to take each month, to how to narrow those photos down, and then some journaling tips and tricks. Before we get started, I just want to remind you that everything I say in this video is more of a guideline than a rule. The Year in a Snap project should be personalized to you, so have fun with it. Along those lines, we all have different computers, phones, programs, applications that we prefer to use for storing, editing, and printing photos. So find the one that works best for you, not necessarily the one I use. Whether it's Heritage Makers program, Google Photos, iPhoto, the list goes on. There's no wrong way to do this project. So come with me and I'll show you a few tips of how I get my book started for Year in a Snap. All right, let's go. Okay, we're ready to start. First things first, you're gonna wanna bring all your photos off your device and onto your computer into the program of your choice where you're gonna sort and edit your photos. So before you even start sorting and editing photos, I wanna encourage everyone to also back up your photos to an external hard drive in addition to any cloud storage you have or the program you're using just to be extra safe. So I'm going to open up my photos and the cool thing about Year in a Snap is that it helps simplify the process of choosing content by giving you a goal of 16 to 20 photos per month in order to document a full year. So obviously you're going to have more photos for things like weddings or um, maybe vacations. So in those cases the rules don't apply. Again, these are guidelines. You can do as many pages as you want for those events. But for the average month, we might need a little bit of help thinking of content if nothing big happened. So here are some ideas of things you can take photos of. So when I look at my photos, I notice that I have a tendency to take pictures of sunsets and my dog and my husband and my dog. So I'm trying to now encourage myself and others to start taking photos of everyday things or things that were going on in that specific month that will be really fun to look back on in the future. So things like your favorite meals that you had um, out to eat or you made, rooms in your house and how they're decorated at the time. It'll be really fun to look back at, at that in the future. Books that you might have read that month or found to be funny or cute. Um, quotes are a super awesome thing to keep, whether they're from social media or things people said. And of course, those funny moments like when you swapped your face with your husband, because why not? It'll be fun to look back on. So those are just some ideas of things that you can take photos of. Another idea is taking things, uh, taking photos of things in order. So each month you can watch your puppy grow, a photo for each month, or your baby grow or even the process of growing a baby. So those are some really cool ideas. Another one is to take something that you have a ton of photos of, like those sunset photos I have, and add some fun graphics or artwork on top of it. There's tons of apps out there that can help you accomplish this, and it's a really cool way to break up those similar photos and make them something unique. So next I wanna talk about another way that you can take photos and document a time. So I went and visited my grandmother in Missouri, and there isn't a ton to do there. There weren't a lot of events or people we were going to see. So I went ahead and took a bunch of photos to set the stage of that trip. And I know that it'll be fun to look back on these photos from her garage, crazy things I found in there, um, from her backyard, the high school my dad went to. Things that I've seen before, but I never took photos of. So it'll be really neat to look back at those. Also, if you are the person behind the camera all the time, make it a goal to get in front of the camera at least a couple times every month. Now that you have all these ideas of things to take photos of, it's time to narrow them down for each month, ideally hitting that 16 to 20 photo mark unless you are doing a bigger event and wanna do more. 
So one way you can do this, most programs offer something similar. You can make albums. So here on my left-hand side, I made an album for every single month. And then I brought all of my photos from my main library for each month into the folder with the right dates. That way, if I delete something from my June folder or album, it will not delete from all my photos. So that's important so you can work on things in a smaller area without deleting them from your whole memory. So here is the month of June. Got quite a few photos here. This is gonna be a quick crash course to narrowing it down. So I try to look for things that I think are important to keep. I also like to look and see um, how many things are represented and if I wanna make a focus on any one topic. Looks like there's quite a few in here. So now I look at the fact that I have several photos of Toby. I really don't need that many from that event. I'll pick the cutest one and delete the others. Camping, this photo, can't really tell what's going on, so I'm gonna delete that. I'm gonna look at if any photos are blurry or not that great. If there's duplicates, I usually keep the one with HDR. It's usually better quality. And I'll delete the other. So I've got about 20 photos right there to work with. From there, it'll be a matter of choosing how I want them all to look with the lighting, or maybe I'll put a filter on it. Um, we can talk more about that in, a, in an editing video. Um, but this is the crash course to deleting excess photos for each month. One other thing to think about as you go through these photos month to month are some potential things you would like to record through journaling. I know that journaling can be super intimidating of what to say, so I went ahead and made a little area of notes on my computer and I divided them by month, just starting to work on some ideas and things I was thinking about, and I divide them into categories and make lists. So I talk about the people I saw, the places I went that month, projects that I was working on, events that happened, and quotes. Another fun category that you can add are TV shows or music. So we were super addicted to Stranger Things um, that month, so I went ahead and put that in because those are the little things that you might forget that are really fun to write down in words, especially if you don't necessarily have a photo to go with it. And there you have it. So this process does take a little bit of time, but once you figure out what programs and methods you want to use for organizing your photos and journaling ideas, it'll make this project so much easier. Remember, you can work on this process at your monthly get-togethers, or you can work a little bit at a time before and start assembling your book at your get-togethers. It's totally up to you. So I hope these tips and tricks were helpful, and I can't wait to give you more fun ideas for your year in a snapbook. See you next time.